9 million Americans are to benefit from Medicare's recent drug price cuts that were announced recently. And here to talk with me about that is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. A pleasure. So the Biden administration recently announced that they were able to negotiate lower drug costs uh, for folks who are getting their drugs uh, under their Medicare plan. Uh, tell us more. There are a lot of things going on going into uh, the annual election period, which will begin on October 15th, Bob. So first of all, the highlights, if you will, are that in 2025, next year, that there's going to be an annual out-of-pocket maximum, a cap on out-of-pocket expenses for Part D plans for prescription drug benefits inside of Medicare Advantage plans, which is $2,000 a year. And this is a tremendous innovation, a tremendous change to many who rely on expensive medications. There's a second lesser known component to that, which is that people will be able to smooth out, if you will, make payments for the entire year in 12 monthly installments. Now you will have to elect to do that. It will not be automatically, in, you will not automatically be enrolled in that 12 month smoothing provision, but that will be available in 2025. The second part had to do with your list. Now what has happened is that the actual negotiation process and comes into effect in 2026. Nevertheless, the negotiations have already begun. And in fact, the other day, the list of those 10 medications was released and the savings were very, very dramatic. It's yet to be seen whether or not those newly released prices will be incorporated in other health insurance situations, such as an individual plan, and most importantly, an employer-sponsored plan. That is yet to be seen. So the uh, for folks who, uh, for next year, if they're on some of these drugs that are on the top 10 list, like Eliquis and others like that, where the list price presently is about $521 for a monthly prescription, a 30-day supply, that person who might in the, uh, typically in years previous might have paid over $5,000 to, to be on this medication will only pay $2,000 in 2025 for that very same medication. That's why I started with that as the original comment. That becomes, for consumers, that's the dominant feature, if you will, for 2025. There's going to be a lot of noise because of the fact that the changes to all Part D plans that result from this new cap and the elimination of the catastrophic phase is basically going to, you know, the ripple effect, if you will, will affect standalone Part D plans going into next year so dramatically, in fact, that the CMS has announced a $15 like extra payment to Part D plans in order to reduce the impact on premium changes going into next year. Among the more mind-boggling things uh, on the drugs that are on this top 10 list, one of them cost $13,836 for a monthly 30-day supply, and that would be sort of um, I guess a breath of fresh air to cons ben Medicare beneficiaries who would benefit from the 2025 uh, price cap. For sure. And let's also say that out of that $13,000 in that instance, already there was a very large 75% discount from it. <clears throat> so nevertheless, that's 25% or that remains of a very large number. $2,000 for an annual out-of-pocket cap, still notably less. So then in terms of 2026 and when these uh, negotiated prices go into effect, 
uh, there'll still be a $2,000 cap on these drugs. So it would be an additional benefit on top of potentially these uh, lower negotiated prices. Yes. Non note, the last thing is that the $2,000 cap will be indexed to inflation. And then there's talk about what the negotiated prices will be for certain other drugs in 2027, including uh, Ozempic and perhaps others. That list will continue to evolve, of course, as the index of the most expensive, most popularly prescribed medication list changes. But yes, that's going to be an ongoing process. The subject of pushback from pharmaceuticals, for sure. Two thoughts. One is, on the surface, this seems like an incredible benefit to Medicare beneficiaries. Uh, on the other, the other question is, well, uh, who pays and who makes up the difference? And how do we sort of uh, uh, figure out the financial entanglement that may result from all this? Well, I think what for consumers, your takeaway is that you're going to want to check. I, we say this every year, but this year, 2025, will be pretty dramatic, meaning that we've already seen announcements from carriers. For example, we would expect a fewer number a lower number of plans to even exist going into next year. And it has been steadily declining over, for example, the past five years, for sure. So what people will want to do is they're going to get annual notice of change, which will tell them how much their premiums will change. Even then, they'll want to check to see individual medications, how those are handled under this new regime, if you will, in 2025. Any thoughts perhaps around um, if you're on Medicare Advantage with a Part D plan or on a Medicare Advantage with a standalone Part D plan, are any thoughts about how those folks should sort of compare and contrast? We will know the details <clears throat> of the exact impact in the coming weeks. So what will happen is the information will be released to the public so that we can inform the public about the new plans on October 1. It's hard to tell what the carriers are going to do as a result of these changes. They've got to adhere to the $2,000 annual out-of-pocket cap for Part D benefits, that's for sure. Whether or not that really changes the different amounts, co-pays, the out-of-pocket cost patterns, notably is difficult to say. We, I would expect, I would expect, and this is a little bit speculative, which is that the difference between Part D plans and Medicare Advantage plans will decline. That in the past, Medicare Advantage plans have been notably cheaper than Part D plans in terms of overall prescription drug costs simply because the carriers have allocated more of their per diem to the Part D portion. Well, that flexibility is going away. So as a result, probably that Part D plans inside of Medicare Advantage will be maybe only marginally better than standalone prescription drug plans. Complicated, Bob complicated, but but I think you've uncomplicated a very uncomplicated matter. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing? It will be fascinating, you know, for the lack of a better word, uh, to see what the balance to be. Still always, you know, the general principles that you and I have talked about on multiple occasions, that these are annual contracts, that Part D Medicare Advantage plans, the way to understand them is to be as annual contracts with a plan year. The obvious implication would be that every single detail is subject to change. We expect 2025 to be pretty eventful.